Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you watched the last video where I quickly pr uh, provided an overview of metaheuristic algorithms and I promised to talk to you about simulated annealing optimization and particle swarm optimization. So here we go. In this video, I'm gonna talk about simulated annealing. The goal is for us to understand exactly what it is by looking at uh, you know, a little bit of code and uh, and in the next videos or in the upcoming videos, I'll talk about particle swarm optimization in a very similar uh, way. Now, if you would like to be informed about the upcoming ones as soon as it gets released, you know what to do, hit the subscribe button. And of course, while you're there, find the thanks button if you're feeling extra generous. Okay, let's jump in here. Again, I provided a brief overview of uh, simulated annealing optimization in the last video. But let's understand this at a little bit more depth in this one. Now, it's again, it's uh, it's inspired by the metallurgical process of annealing where the temperature is slowly cooled. So you get the optimal grain structure for the material. But in this case, for optimization algorithm, there is nothing like metallurgy grain structure. So forget all of that. It's basically comes down to one fact. You're decreasing the temperature slowly to get the desired result. What happens when you're doing that? And that's let's understand that. And how does it work? It works by iteratively adjusting the temperature, obviously not adjusting, actually decreasing the temperature uh, in an iterative way and looking at your final solution and comparing it with the solution from previous iteration and saying, is this better or worse? Now, again, I'll explain that in a minute if you haven't watched the last video. I mean, this is basically the same slide from the last video, but I promise to give more context. Uh, and at high temperatures, you start at a high temperature, you go to low temperature. Okay, that's what annealing is. And at high temperature, the algorithm accepts solutions that are worse than the previous iteration because maybe you're stuck at a local minima or maybe what where you are is not the right solution. Okay, so the right solution may be somewhere else. So you need to explore that. And that's exactly why you change this temperature. And at high temperatures, you accept, there's a good chance that you're accepting the solution. At low temperatures, there's a good chance you're not accepting these weird solutions that are out of the scope. And the cooling schedule, of course, determines how fast you're actually changing this over every iteration. Now, let's go to the next slide and just look at a couple of aspects here, uh, which is, it starts with an initial solution, like I mentioned and iteratively generates a new solution. Now, if this is not better, it's accepted. Now, again, I'm repeating myself, I hear that. So let's go and look at exactly what happens, yeah? So if the delta is less than zero, delta is again uh, the change from last time to this time. It's less than zero means I have a better solution this time or greater than zero, depending on whether you're finding maxima or minima. Either way, if the change is uh, within what you wanted to accept, then accept the new solution. Else, you accept it with certain probability. Then you calculate that, okay, what is the probability? At high temperature, the probability is high. There's a negative sign right there. At high temperature, there's a prob uh, higher probability. And then you generate a random number and say, okay, is that less than this probability? If so, accept the new solution. If not, reject the new solution, meaning you are rejecting the good solution and uh, sticking with the bad solution. So you can explore this space better, okay? I hope things make sense once we go into the code, but I'll show you uh, snippets of code before jumping into the uh, into actual co our Google Colab notebook. Now, cooling schedule, as I mentioned, determines how quickly the temperature actually decreases. Of course, everyone wants to have like infinitely slow cooling temperatures, but that means you have a lot more iterations to go through. and Usually, you, uh, the common convention is set a constant cooling rate and then just go through it. I say usually, but you can be a bit more tricky. You can say, hey, when the temperature is large, I just want like, uh, you know, smaller steps or larger steps. But as temperature gets lower and lower, I want the cooling to be slower, for example. Yeah, you can schedule it, but typically people leave it at a fixed fraction. Uh, just like the one I show you on the screen. Some alpha, some value multiplied by the temperature is what you're taking as the next one. And alpha can be 0 0.95, for example, which means you're cooling the temperature by 5% each iteration. Okay, now let's understand the algorithm by looking at the Python code. Here, there is an objective function where we define some function. The goal is to find the minima. 
or the solution basically, right, for this one. And in this case, the answer is four, five, and minus six, as you know. And you define a search space. You say, okay, my bounds, again, this is a lot. We, we will look at this in a minute, but you basically say the bounds is, uh, okay, my solution is between zero to 10, X, zero to 10, Y, and minus 10 to zero, Z, right? So those are the bounds and you need to define that. Otherwise, if your solution is here, no point in searching somewhere else. You have to search where the solution is most probably lying. And uh, you also provide initial and final temperature. So you start at certain temperature and you cool it, uh, I don't know, 5% every time, yeah? Uh, and uh, yeah, so here is something that we will be generating in this uh, in this tutorial, which is you, we have a solution space and trying to find the maxima in this example. So you start somewhere, you work your way, you work your way, not the right solution, not the right solution, not the right solution, and so on. And you finally find the peak. In this case yeah so we'll visually do this in this uh, in, in just by jumping into the code right now so let's go ahead and do that and I am going to give you this 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 uh, notebook link to this so don't bother writing down anything and I have all the text here in case you want to go back and read it uh, at your own pace okay so understanding the algorithm via Python code I explained a lot of this stuff but a couple of things I want to show you T initial T final we talked about it cooling rate I'm going to set it to 0.95 which means it's going to change by 5% every iteration and the bounds we are going to set between 0 to 10 for the first two values and minus 10 to 0 for the third parameter because that's where the solution lies okay <coughs> okay I think that's enough background let's go ahead and run this all I'm using is standard libraries there is no tricky libraries here numpy random math and matplotlib for plotting and I'm defining my objective function as this x minus 4 squared so you know the uh, solution is going to be 4 5 and minus 6 okay now let's define the range because our solution lies between minus 10 oh in this case I'm instead of defining 0 to 10 for all of these I'm actually defining minus 10 to 10 which is okay we know that our solution lies between this a bit larger search space but still I'm confident we'll find this in a fraction of a second so minus 10 to 10 minus 10 to 10 minus 10 to 10 for xyz and I'm going to create a uh, mesh right there for, and my objective function and filling that objective function right there and creating a contour plot so basically this this part is just so we can visualize how the objective function looks like and this is a contour plot so I expect a 2d contour plot let's see that's what I'm yeah that's not a 3d plot okay there we go and again all of this is optional I'm just doing this because I just want to show you how the solution space looks like and initially I, I said these are my bounds these are not the bounds this is just my x range y range and z range for the plotting itself so you can ignore this part completely if you don't want to visualize this but I just want to show you how the solution space looks like yeah so the goal for our optimization algorithm is to navigate through this and find the right solution which is around five and six and in z it's going to be around minus six right so that's the solution so how do we do that so let's define our simulated annealing functions and then go ahead and run these functions so i again showed this as part of our presentation the parameters that go in are the objective function that we are trying to you know use as a fitness function here bounds the limits the initial temperature final temperature and the cooling that's it it's very straightforward actually and uh, you're looking at how many parameters uh, based on the bounds right I mean if my bounds have uh, multiple parameters like three parameters then I have three that's the number of parameters what are the current parameters just go ahead and start somewhere you have to start somewhere so I'm gonna randomly start somewhere within this space and the current solution is you take those parameters and plug them into objective function then you get a solution right and that is your current solution and then you have your current temperature and uh, while the current temperature is higher than the final temperature go ahead and do the following perturbed parameters or the new parameters or updated parameters are the ones right there and the updated solution is where you plug in the updated parameters into the objective function so you get updated solution now now you take this uh, uh, difference between the updated solution and the 
previous solution or the current solution, the existing solution, and that is your delta. And in this case, uh, I'm accepting, uh, I'm trying to find the peak. So if the delta is less than zero, go ahead and accept it, which means current parameters equals to the, uh, the updated one or the new one, current solution is the new one. If not, go ahead and calculate the probability based on the current temperature. And if that probability is greater, or if a random number is less than that probability, then go ahead and accept the solution right there. Uh, current parameters is the per perturbed parameters, and current solution is the perturbed solution right there, okay? And uh, go ahead and, uh, I mean, basically this part, again, I hope this is the meat of it, yeah? Which means instead of rejecting the solution, we are accepting a solution that's worse with a certain probability. That's exactly what we are doing right there, okay? And then we are just changing the temperature, that's it. And this part is basically plotting the cooling rates. So let me go ahead and uh, run that. And now let's go ahead and run this. So our bounds are minus 10 to 10 for uh, all of these. Well, I guess I ended up using minus 10 to 10 as bounds for all. And uh, the initial temperature 100, final temperature is 0 0.1 and change it at 5%. And uh, cooling rates are there and plot the cooling rates right here. So let's go ahead and, so it took that many, result for cooling rate 0 0.2, for cooling rate 0 0.5. Instead of doing one cooling rate, by the way, I should explain this. Instead of doing one cooling rate of 0 0.2, remember we set the cooling rate constant, uh, so instead of that, I actually uh, experimented with a few different cooling rates like 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 0.9, and I'm printing all the values down here. So the result at cooling rate 0 0.2 is 6.5 minus 0 0.6. That's not a good result. In fact, if you look at uh, a high uh, a cooling rate of 0 0.9, the solution is 3, 7, and minus 5. So what is the actual solution? 4 five and minus six. So this is almost minus six. This is seven. This is 2.8, which is like three. Let's say this is, uh, it should be four. So maybe we should just do more iterations or more, you know, smaller. I mean, that eventually you can see that how the solution is actually showing up right there. For this cooling rate, it's actually doing a much better, much better uh, job. Okay, so with that information, let's go ahead and actually understand the visualizing the optimization process. Again, I did kind of something similar, but I kind of got a bit more complex objective function, the one that you saw in the image before. So let's go ahead and run that, define the objective function, and now let's go ahead and plot it. Yeah, this is a 3D plot, not a contour plot, so let's go ahead and see. So this is the new objective function instead of just a uh, simple one that I showed you earlier. So the goal is to start somewhere, but then find the peak right here, okay? So for that, we have a simulated annealing right there. I called it 3D, nothing. It, everything is exactly identical. I don't have like much of a difference between previous one and here. So you can see it's very similar code right here. And uh, I'm defining my bounds and cooling rate of 0 0.95. Let's set it to 0 0.95, which means we are changing the rate at 5%. And there you go, that's the plot. And this time it actually started. When I did the first simulation, you saw on my opening screen that it started over there and it worked its way to the top. Now it started over here and slowly it found its way to the top right there. So uh, I think, uh, again, these are abstract examples. In the next video, let's go ahead and use the steel optimization example and then try to understand how we can put the simulated annealing to use and should we actually code all of this or is, this, is there a standard library that we can import and do these type of examples? We'll see. Go ahead and uh, watch our next tutorial. Until then, keep learning. See you next time.